Hi, and welcome to Vancouver Bass Players. I'm Lawrence Mollerup, and today I'm going to be interviewing Jared Smith from the band Archspire. Hey, Jared. How are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you today? I'm all right. It is a lovely day in uh, Vancouver town. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. Uh, so you live near the beach, right? Are you going to be I out and get some sun later on? Yeah, yeah. I'm out in uh, Kitsilano, so I'll be uh, make some time to go see the go see the ocean tonight. Excellent. That yeah. sounds really good. As yeah. long as you're safely distant. Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, yeah. Right. As we're all doing. It's, it's nice so, you know, with, with everybody kind of. There's less tourists, so it's you got a little bit more space. It's great. It's true, right? It's. Exactly. I noticed that too when I'm out in public. Uh, the sidewalks are. It's fairly easy to to get past people. Yeah. Totally. So this is cool. Um, I haven't seen you in a while. I think it was last. Was it two winters ago? Yeah, when you came to. Uh, teach at the college uh, for the alumni week was it that long ago yeah i'm thinking it was yeah 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 yeah, yeah. that's a while back so yeah. we actually haven't seen each other in a little while and, and yeah, we still that. haven't because this doesn't count yeah <laughs> that doesn't so um since uh, we both have our bases i figured it'd be fun uh for you to show me something of what you do in your band yeah. and your way of playing and uh i was saying before like when I knew how to do tapping, it was on the stick in the 80s because I used to do sort of uh, like Tony Levin, Peter Gabriel music where I was playing chords and bass on the stick. Mm -hmm. I was never very good at it, but I kind of started to learn. And it hasn't been a requirement in my career. But I figure if anybody out there wants to learn to tap, you're looking at the guy uh, with Jared. Uh, so you teach online, right? I do, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so if, if people – and not just tap, of course. You teach yeah. music. Yeah. Um, but all kinds of really cool stuff that you can learn to do on the bass. Yeah. Uh, so maybe show me a, a basic thing, uh, tapping for dummies. Sure, yeah. Um, so when you keep it on one string, it's really, it just sounds like eruption. Right? It, it, so if you start to get like multiple fingers there. Okay, got it. There, there you go. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's a start to eruption. Uh, thank you, Van Halen. Um, <laughs> so the more fingers you start to introduce, and you can start to cross strings, and uh, it, it breaks it out of that sound. Um, so really simple. You're on a five string. So really simple arpeggio that I like to do is just a, a major arpeggio, just like that. So with my left hand, I get my root, major third, fifth root, and third. Okay, so the, the E. Yeah. Uh, uh. So you're in G, okay. Yeah. The last three notes are all in the right hand? Uh, so it's left, left, right, right, left. Okay. So the the B is with your finger yeah. up. Right, so the left hand's making an octave. Yeah. Okay, cool. I'm going to start that uh, the root with my second finger on my left hand. I get root and third with the oh. left hand. Got it. The G's yeah. in there too. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. Okay, I'll I'll try that. Sorry, man. It takes yeah. me a second. That's all right. Yeah. And you Am can I do distorting a little bit. It sounds like maybe I'm distorting a little bit. No, sounds all right. Sweet. Yeah. So you can either do like a coming down is the hard part because you have a choice of either a double hammer on on the same string, which can be hard to synchronize, or you get a pull off. And then okay. that, the B doesn't necessarily have the same attack. Um, right, if you pull off, it's kind of softer. Yeah. So it's, you know, technique allowing and, and how picky you want to be. If you can hammer everything on, it's, that's great. But if not, it's not always that easy to do. Is it, so is it less Van Halen to pull off? <laughs> I think it would be less Van Halen and more, uh, I had someone tell me that Alan Holdsworth only did hammer-ons. And right. so if you want to do true uh, legato on guitar, it has to all be hammer-ons. Um, and I don't know how much truth there is to that. Um, I think the pull-off is an important sound and something that people tend to actually look over because it's a little harder to do. Yeah, he sounds slow. And I think of Holdsworth, he's got that kind of sustaining sound, right? Yeah. So it's probably a bunch of hammer-on pull-off stuff going on. Yeah, yeah. Let me uh, try this again, okay? Sure. Is it okay? Yeah, yeah of course. So Right, so yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so now, if you want to do that, will give you like sixteenth notes or eighth notes. And if you want to make it triplets, 
you can take this shape we've been doing in the right hand and put it, move it up an octave at the end there. Sweet. Okay, so you're feel. just moving your right hand from the... yeah, from the, from there up the octave. Okay, so right, and it's interesting on the ding wall. I have to kind of turn my fingers a little bit because yeah. the twelfth fret there's a little bit more slant to the uh, yeah. to the scale. Right, so it's yeah. remembering that the G's are all second finger in the right hand. Yeah. <laughs> Right, okay. So I'm just going to try it coming down. Sure, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so that's that's a shape that I like to use. And if you want more of a jazzy sound, you can start with just the root and third and then get sharp 11 and 7. And you kind of get like a bit of a jazzier sound with... Uh, a simple adjustment just move that uh, those same that same shape down a fret yeah so you'd be getting um, B yeah. oh, sorry uh, F sharp and C yeah. sharp yeah. on top yeah uh, let me try it sure that yeah. it yeah I can't do it as fast as you but what I love is that you show it slow enough yeah where I could do it really slow for a while until I could speed it up yeah it's and then it becomes you... kind of like one movement yeah, it's important that you actually can play it slowly and well at a slow tempo so you kind of can process the rhythm and the feel and then start to speed it up. Do you use a metronome a lot when you start licks like that? Yeah, yeah. I use a metronome and I'll even put the metronome so fast that it will match every note um, because it's, especially with stranger techniques, it's easy to sort of fall into like a... Like and, and kind of swing the rhythms a little bit or flam things uh, and really lock it in with the metronome one note per click. And make that nice and even and mechanical. And the other perk of slowing it down is this is the big, this is like the really important one is actually sustaining these notes. Right? Um, and not. Right, and kind of getting just like a short attack and no sustain because then it's not really a note. It's just more of a percussive thing. Well, that makes me think I'm thinking of a lot of things right now. The first thing about like being really accurate, it's the same when, when I'm playing like with my gospel choir and I'm locking in with the drummer yeah. and I really want to get into that pocket to make the music feel right. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, everything that stacks on top of it is not going to work. Yeah. So this is the same kind of thing, especially if you're underneath a bunch of guitars yeah. with distortion and everybody's got to do that. I remember um, like Tony Kosh, the guitar teacher at VCC, the, the former guitar teacher, yeah. always talked about distortion has to be even cleaner. Yeah, like you don't get away with anything when you distort it. You got to play even cleaner. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, you if you can't control, this is going to make a lot of noise. Yeah, that you don't want. And if you can't control that, if you start adding distortion, it's just gonna you get so much like hiss and and upper harmonics that you you can't even hear what's going on. This is uh, a nice tool. And oh yeah, should, should be used as you should be able to kind of control ninety percent of the noise with your hands. And this is sort of the, the last five to ten percent to clean it up. Well, I found when I like I started playing five and six string bass back in like '84. Yeah. And you always got that rumbling. It's hard right? to keep that quiet. So I always did it with like my thumb on the string. Yeah. Or sometimes like my pinky on the string. Okay. But That's, I never uh, had any any like hair ties back then. I think that came in quite a bit later. Yeah. Uh, but uh, like I always notice that on recordings that bottom string just ringing like crazy So for me, I have a backwards thumb. Yeah, okay So it's easy to just kind of rest it on there and then the rest yeah. of my hand just does what it does Yeah, but I can totally see that hair tie thing and then so the second thing I realized listening to what you said was if you get control of the note lengths mm -hmm. yeah. So it's just like staccato legato in any other kind of music. Absolutely. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah. So more control over the technique as opposed to just being limited to, I can only, I only have the strength to hold the note for so long. When you talk about chords, I know you mentioned like sharp 11 before. So sure. do you think of kind of jazz terminology when you're labeling chords? Is yeah. that kind of the, the shorthand? Yeah. So, yeah. 
so stuff you learn in, in the college yeah. <laughs> with your jazz chords, but turn turn for other purposes. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's really took cool. All that, and, took all that jazz stuff and said, I can't play jazz very well, but I'll I'll take it to metal. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, it, it's what it's just nomenclature anyway, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so you could, I suppose, you would take this exercise and then maybe go to. <laughs> I did that badly, but just go to minor and then minor. you know. Yeah. Extend out to a bunch of different chords. Yeah, yeah. Try and find the inversions, uh, major and minor. Like the triads seem to work better than a lot of the seventh stuff. It can be hard to actually get a, a shape that plays well um, with the sevenths, but uh, they're there. Uh, the triads tend to just be a little stronger in metal. And if you can, uh, you know, like for like with that with that exercise there, you know, I only kind of take the the jazzier notes at the end there. Because if it was all extensions, it just kind of loses. It's your job is to be the, the fundamental of the band. Um, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, and it it has this kind of sorry, Jared. Yeah, that's that's just what I found works, but yeah. It has this kind of like, um, you know, to the ear, it's almost like harpsichord sound, right? Where it's it's a really wide ranging arpeggio with quite a bright sound. Like the, I know yeah. this bass. You know, it was made to have that really cutting sound yeah. uh, where you, you get heard. Like, you're always yeah, getting heard. Mids. Those mids. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So um, I think that's good for the lesson for me. I can I can take that ball and run with it for sure. Right, yeah, yeah. I can see expanding that to all kinds of chord voicings and sounds and, and different kinds of things. Might get me fired on some gigs. <laughs> but... You know, not to be totally flippant about it, yeah. this is a technique that a bass teacher like me would want to know how to do yeah. because you got to show your students everything. Yeah. Um, so even though I'm a guy who teaches a lot of bow and, and walking and jazz stuff, mm. um, I think it's cool. You know, like more information is always good. So. Absolutely. If you're kind of dabble with everything and see what you like and find a way to make it work with whatever you do. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I've also, I'm going to ask you because now that I'm thinking of it, I heard... Um, one, we were talking about influences before, you know, and, and Victor Wooten's a, a yeah. big one for you. Yeah. He does this thing with his right hand where he'll he'll just yeah. kind of vibrato. The, do you do that? Um, a lot of our stuff is so fast that I don't necessarily have time to do a lot of vibrato. <laughs> um, I am starting to, like, experiment more with, like, um, as opposed to just playing, like, one arpeggio with both hands and starting to just... Play like a chord with the left and maybe like a, a bass line with the right. Right, and think about it more like a left hand, right hand on a piano. That's um, beautiful. No, thank you. I, I, uh, I found this bass player recently, John Ferreira. Oh, yeah. He's amazing, and he's doing a lot of the stuff uh, that we're, we're talking about. and. He's, he's given me so many ideas in the last couple of weeks since I've discovered him. Uh, That's really cool. Yeah. So, Who was the other guy? Uh, was it Erlen Kasperson you were talking about yeah, as well? Yeah, Erlen Kasperson. He's, uh, he doesn't do a lot of tapping, um, right. but he's, I mean, he's a machine. You can you, you play anything perfectly. It is wild. Um, he's, he was playing in a band called uh, Spawn of Possession is where I first heard him, uh, who's an, like one of the great, pioneers of technical death metal and recently he's been playing bass in this really bizarre electronic band called igor cool with like a bunch of r's igor and uh, <laughs> it's i mean it's it's wild it's it's he's his playing is incredible anytime i'm like i don't know what to do i just watch one of his videos and go oh all right yeah Oh, I, got lots to do. <laughs> I got lots to do <laughs> hey i'm gonna cut to something here um sure, yeah uh, I've got a, a Archspire clip up here. It's got a tune called Remote Tumor Seeker, and it's it's you, just a close-up on you with some really cool camera angles. Yeah. And uh, when I was listening before, I think I stopped it right at the coolest part. So I'm going to let it play for a bit here because this was pretty amazing to hear uh, before. So I'm, I'll start the music, and then I'll do the share. That was, that was pretty a lot there. Was That'll a lot. do. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Do you recognize yeah. that last bass part there in that uh, that last section? Well, sorry. Did you recognize the bass line from that last section? We stole that. Really? Okay. From yeah. where? That was um, from uh, Mozart, Confutatis. Um, wow. The, uh, un the unfinished symphony or whatever uh, his the 
whatever it's called. <laughs> no, that's really cool. Yeah. yeah I mean, it, it sounds, it sounds so much like a lot of classical music and harmonically and, yeah. uh, and, and even texturally like, uh, the bass sounds kind of like a harpsichord almost. It's got a Baroque kind of quality with that. Yeah. Um, and those really fast arpeggios that you guys play in unison, you know, like we wait and then really high, yeah. fast moves. Like uh, it, it takes some a little bit of practice. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> we had like, a, you know, I, I had it written one way and then our producer was like, oh, you have to match the, you know, what with the kicks and everything, which is really hard when you're up here and you got to go back and forth. Um, but I kind of figured out a way to do it. So... <laughs> No, it sounds like you definitely figured it out. You got you to sort of map out like which hand you end on so that if I, all right, I got to make sure I end on my left hand so that I can get back in time or, you know, there's a lot of mapping you have to do. But. Yeah. It's like a choreography of, of the hands. And yeah. uh, for, for a bass player like me who plays, you know, just, just finger style all the time, I can see that would be one of the challenges because not only do you have to take your hand off, but you got to land in the right spot. Yeah. left hand you used to move it around i mean i play string bass and yeah. it's like four feet of of distance sometimes to get like a, <laughs> a perfect fifth is like four feet so oh my god <laughs> uh, so i can relate to the left hand but yeah. yeah no no so that's really interesting um in in terms of uh the sound right and how you how are producing that yeah. uh let's talk about gear for a second that's always fun yeah yeah so i know you're a big dark glass guy my dingwall bass has a dark glass preamp in it yeah. Yeah, I got the same um, one in uh, in this base. Oh, cool! The great That's, preamp. And then you you got a bunch of their cabs and amps and stuff as well. I got uh, their two. I got two of their new four ten um, cabinets that they just released um, this year at NAM. Uh, and I've got an X seven B seven K Ultra. I've got the original compressor, the Supersymmetry, and I've got the new one, the Hyperluminal. I've got their M nine hundred version two amp head. I think I said. I think that's all. <laughs> I think I saw you uh, close to the day you got that amp head. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. I just got it when I did the uh, the clinic at uh, VCC. So, yeah. uh, I mean, just, just phenomenal gear and uh, craftsmanship and everything they release, they seem to they seem to set the bar and you go, wow, I can't get any better than this. And they put, put out something new that, you know, you, now you need the new one. Uh, so they're, they're really, really great gear. And, Excellent. Uh, whether it's even you can dial this stuff really clean and just get like a really nice clean sound or as saturated and overdriven as you want. They can do it for you. That's really cool. Yeah. I love the versatility of the preamp um, that they made for the, for this bass, yeah. different frequencies. Right. And, and uh, it works for the music I play as well. It doesn't have to be just for metal, right? They're, they're usable preamps for everything. Yeah. They're, it's like the frequencies you want. It's like, Oh, too much bass. And it's like, well, it's exactly what I wanted less of. And it's they're they really EQ'd very nicely. I think um, I think his name's Doug. I think Doug and Sheldon got together and wrote it on a napkin somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> winter and it was like okay, let's that's crazy. Let's do that and and it yeah. turned out to be a great invention. Yeah. Yeah. Those yeah. two. Yeah, man. Oh man. Yeah. So um, so if people want to take lessons with you, I should just make sure we cover that. Sure. Are, are you easy to find on the web? I'm easy to find online. You can find me on uh, Instagram at jar shred um, is, is a good place to find me. Or my email is uh, jar smith dot music at gmail.com. And I, uh, I'm always looking for uh, checking emails for that for lessons and stuff like that. And I'm usually quick to, to respond. Jar smith dot yeah. music at gmail.com. So jar smith, like one word. Yeah. So you're a guy that makes jars, a smith of jars. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some people are blacksmiths. I've got a, you know, I'm a mason jar guy. Yeah, yeah my, my name is actually like the, the farm of the miller, so I, I guess I make flour. Okay. Everybody's got to make something, right? Yeah, yeah, why not? Yeah. Well, really cool. Um, I guess I'll uh, wrap up. Maybe if you want to tell me uh, one of your favorite music stories, one of your favorite memories, um, maybe a big concert you've done. Yeah. Yeah. Or, uh, you know, something somebody something taught you or, or something somebody threw at you. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to think if anybody threw anything at me on stage. Uh, I, don't, I don't remember ever, ever being, having anything thrown at me yet. Um, but I got to play Hellfest last summer in, uh, in, in France. And that was, you know, uh, incredible. 10, 12,000 people and just uh, so nervous. But, you know, once we started playing, it was, it was incredible. And uh, probably the most fun I've 
I can remember having on stage, you know, it's moments like that. That's you, you kind of it's like, holy shit, I, I, I'm sorry, I swore, but it's like, I made it, you know? And that was sort of like the, the first real, you know, big moment. Did they know your music over there? Like, was it an audience that was ready for you guys? They were, they were ready for us and they were singing along and they were, it was, it, it blew my mind, you know, we're so far from home and uh, there's all these people all over Europe who are really into what we're doing. Uh, it's really crazy. <laughs> well, that's a, what a great thing to have achieved. And I'm sure you're going to do it again and again. And so. even yeah. bigger audiences next time when the veil is lifted and we're all out there and, and doing yeah. thing again. It's, yeah, you know, I try not to think about what live music is going to be like for a while after uh, all this COVID stuff, but uh, hopefully it comes back. I, I don't think music's going anywhere. I think we're all going to be back stronger than ever, and uh, there'll be a pause, and we'll all be safe, and we'll get through it. And like we were talking before, uh, BC is a good place to be throughout this whole period. And, uh, yeah, we're pretty lucky here. Yeah, we're in good hands, right? So. Yeah. All right, Jared, I'm going to leave it at that. And uh, thank you so much for what you taught me today yeah. and for hanging out. Uh, and I'll, I'll post this up and uh, we'll make sure that your links get through as well. Great. And uh, have a great afternoon. Enjoy the beach, man. Yeah, thanks for hanging out, Lawrence. Okay, see you again. Yeah. See ya.